I'm actually very uncomfortable with the amount of attention I get. I don't know what to do with it. Delhi police ne Disha Ravi ko Bengaluru mein graftar kiya. Kisan andolan mein antarrashtri saazish, tool kit ke piche Khalistani saazish. She was the one who was leading the entire conspiracy. A country which is not afraid afraid of China can't possibly be afraid of Disha. I'm not going to sell myself to you to make myself something you accept or someone that you accept. I don't care about pleasing you or people. After I came out of jail, I I was really clueless about the amount of hate but also about the amount of love that was essentially directed my way and it took me a while it took me a, a month two months to um figure it out i was still in delhi uh, even after i came out because i was supposed to participate in the investigation so i was there for almost a month after there was obviously a lot of uh, fear and i think that's okay because i was portrayed as really brave and everything and i get that uh but that didn't mean i wasn't scared right my life had completely changed i don't know in what way but it had changed mostly negative whatsapp messages were exchanged between disha ravi and greta thunberg which clearly exposes the global plot against india i'm actually very uncomfortable with the amount of attention i get i don't know what to do with it sometimes The charges are um, sedition and criminal conspiracy, and there are a bunch of others. I think issues that they haven't filed a charge sheet, and it's been over a year. I don't know what's happening. It's been very hard, but I think it's been very satisfying because you've made so many friends, so many people you absolutely love, uh, people you haven't even met, but you worked with them for like months. I think my mom was really, really surprised—not surprised, shocked. Having her only daughter taken away was really like heartbreaking for her. And uh, I think what was really nice was that a lot of my friends, a lot of uh, the people I work with in the movement, uh, the place I was working at. they were all very supportive um and they really provided my mom that community and that support that she needed my grandparents were farmers and i saw them suffer through the water crisis by not because they didn't have access to underground water levels uh which meant that they didn't have access to water because that was the only source of water that they were dependent on back then and this was when i was very young i was probably like 5 6 years old and i don't even remember a lot of these details except watching them really struggle to just get access to one of the most basic necessities and it's not the fault of like uh, the bbmp worker and it's not the fault of like the individual but it's the problem of the government because they didn't set up a proper system so we need to hold them accountable to set up a system so that's the role we'll play and that's the role they'll play and that's when i really started looking up all of these questions and understanding why it happened and that's when i understood it's because of the climate and environmental crisis even though when we started we still work with a lot of people on ground a lot of environmental groups that existed in bangalore very loose citizen groups that didn't really have names that didn't really have organizations set up but they were the people who were doing something for the environment we actually have really good policies internationally uh, about our commitments but the issue is that we really never implemented the good policy that's that we discuss in climate conferences across the world don't actually leave the pages they are written on there's a national action plan for climate change that hasn't been implemented hasn't been revised with new information that the ipcc report came out with no one knows what happened with the budget because it's so vague and it really makes you question what's what the government considers important so when we started fridays for future we had no idea what we were doing um we were like 19 20 year olds or even younger we didn't know how to organize the protest we didn't know how to get people together um but we wanted to do something i was in bangalore with a bunch of others there were people in delhi mumbai and then smaller cities started um engaging there were no young people talking about this and i think that's something we wanted to change uh so we had a strike actually uh, i think on march 15th in 2019 it was our first strike we didn't know we had to actually take police permission for strikes and i showed up early for a change um at the strike location as the first one there i bought i bought posters so setting up the posters and i was waiting for everyone so the 
police show up and I'm like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, we have a strike for climate. <laughs> He's like, where's your permission? I'm like, what? And I thought only like five of my friends and like some of the organizers' friends will show up. So totally 30 people should come. <laughs> That's all. But like 150 people showed up. It really made me hopeful uh, for the future because people coming together and showing up for something was amazing. It hurts on people who want, you know, the same things as you do. They want a better life for everyone, but they are coming on the internet and making assumptions about you when they know absolutely nothing about you. They think your life is glamorous because you're on like the front facing side of the media. But the truth is that, I mean, it's not really glamour in the first place, but just the fact that you're in front of the media all the time isn't something that lasts. And sometimes they straight up ask you to explain a lot about your life that is deeply private and personal. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sell myself to you to make myself um, that is something that something you accept uh, or someone that you accept. I don't care about pleasing you or people. While I'm grateful for like the media attention because it enables a larger message to go out and also to a very large extent protects me um, from harassment in different degrees. But at the same time, um, there is harassment from like the larger news media. There is harassment from trolls. Your privacy is always violated. And I think I love organizing uh, protests because to me, protests are a celebration as well as a strike, um, as a rebellion. But I think for a really long time, I wouldn't let myself be happy at protests because we're, you know, protesting against something. It's a strike against something. But the truth is, I'm the happiest because it brings me joy to see people come together. It reminds me of unity. It reminds me of our collective power when you're united as citizens of this country demanding for our rights. And each protest have been the same. Like the, it's been colorful, it's been artistic, um, and it's been fun. And it's reminded me of why I continue to do what I do. I do do therapy now, um, and I've been doing it for a while. And I think it's very helpful because um, it's important to be self-reflective, but it's also important to just take care of yourself. And especially in a world that's constantly out there to make you question yourself and not in a good way, in a bad way, but and also to discredit you in so many ways. I think it's important for all of us to play a role in the larger climate movement because it's all of our responsibilities to stop the climate crisis. The people I work with in the climate and environmental movement uh, motivate me to continue doing what I do. They're a bunch of people who love radically. Um, they love the planet and they love each other. And that's why I continue my fight for climate justice. Golgappa. We'd bunk so many classes to watch movies. My mother. Yeah, see, no one really wants to date activists and everyone uh, will have in their bio never, have never been to jail. I'm like, so what am I supposed to say? I have? Like, probably when I was 19. No, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. Um, I really like this, anything by Taylor Swift. I like the song called, song called Gar, and I like the song called Pasuri. Um, most of it was actually spent reading. A lot of diversity. I, I, I don't feel like I've been free for a while. Hi everyone, I'm Dasha Ravi. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to Hot Apply.